I made a huge mistake. What's up guys, we're back with another sad, sad Yu-Gi-Oh video. I did something that as a Yu-Gi-Oh YouTuber, I should know better. I made a mistake that only a novice could make. What is that mistake you ask? I didn't open my case of Darkwing Blast blisters before they reprinted all the good cards. So that means I have an entire case of blister packs of Darkwing Blast and they've just reprinted Fenrir, they've reprinted Rebellion, they've reprinted some of the Starlights even, the Cartesia, I mean, half the card, they're like half value now. I've had this for months. All I had to do was open it up in a video. I make videos every day. I had plenty of opportunity to open it up and yet I didn't. So before we get into how sad that is and we'll open up some of these packs and potentially pull some half value cards, we have a giveaway. I'll be giving away this Master Collection 2 set of promos, all six of them. That includes the Black Luster Soldier. That's some pretty amazing stuff, Exodia Necros. Just like the video, be subscribed, turn on notifications, let me know what mistake that you've made when it comes to Yu-Gi-Oh! And uh, how dumb am I for sitting on these for two months while they were, you know, 50 bucks, you know, Lubellion 60, whatever they were, Fenrir. How dumb am I? And keep it nice, okay? Okay, so this isn't just about me being dumb and not opening these in time to actually get the cards out before they get reprinted and killed in value, which is a whole other discussion that we sort of talked about before, but we could talk about it a little bit more in another video. But I also have never pulled the Blackwing Dragon. Still haven't pulled the Starlight, so we are still looking for that. There are still some good cards in here, even though a lot of them have seen reprints. I mean, we still got the Blazing Cartesia Starlight. We got the Lady Labyrinth Starlight. I mean, there's some good stuff. The Blackwing is the second to worst one, actually, but there's good stuff that we could get out of here, and these are still blister packs while they are from a case shouldn't mean they're pretty crazy in terms of ratio so i'm hoping that in this video cucumber horse this is still an awesome set even though this just got a reprint as well tilting entrainment okay i haven't opened this in a while cash Tier ogre just got a reprint in the mega tins that was a i think it was a secret in the mega tins if you guys don't know konami did actually take a break for a month on releases so the next release is until next month but then they go crazy again there's like three in a row so i'm kind of in like a dead period of no free content i don't get to open you know there's not like a new set every like two weeks which you know, it's a good thing for Yu-Gi-Oh, I think, but it's a bad thing for me having easy content. So I was looking around like, what can I make a video about? Uh, there's a super rare, okay. And then I was like, wait, is that a Darkwing Blast case that I never opened? I technically did open and I open, I think I opened like 10 blisters. So that doesn't really count. I still have like, I think they come in 240 in cases of blisters. So 230 packs left that I didn't open. And I was like, oh no. And then I thought back, wait, we just opened Megatons. Remember how many Darkwing Blast cards were in there? Oh, the best cards in the set, Fenrir. Oh yeah, Lubellion, the top two cards, they're both from this set. Oh, I could have opened these and had the original prints and sold them for way more money uh, before the reprint. But instead, your boy, which is me by the way, decided that he wanted to open them for half price. So yeah, not the best feeling. Uh, these used to be one of the absolute best values to open up. You can go check out my older Darkwing Blast videos. And I just love this set because there were so many different things like supers were there are a couple supers. The bestial stuff was crazy. Got reprinted by the way. The supers were like 10 bucks and stuff. Uh, that that even got a reprint the whole sets in the Megaton basically and then there's the ultras They had like the Fenrir which is really expensive. There's a secret Lubellion. The unicorn was good The unicorn's not even a dollar in the tins. It was 20 in here when it first came out It was an insane open like you could get so many good cards with me and Simo put together pulled the starlight rare Which was one of the coolest moments. We might even flash back to it after we finish this pack right here. Very nice Yeah, just an epic moment that happened right here ah! That's so good. So I've had some really good times with this set and uh, also some really, really sad times, which is right now, this is a sad time that, you know, all the cards are not worth anything anymore. Not necessarily not worth anything. Cause like the Fenrir is still 20 bucks, which is still pretty good. Lobelion still 27. That's still pretty good. I mean, that's money. Cartesia is down at 17. I'm sure these are going to go down even more as we go. I think I'll get three from the back, but it'll be fine. Uh, as the Mega Tens get more dispersed, these are going to go down even more, most likely. If I had to guess, they are original print, but it doesn't mean that much when they're, you know, a super rare version versus a secret. People are going to want the prismatic secret. It just looks better. It's a little bit of a bittersweet video reminiscing on one of my favorite sets of, was this 2022? Yeah, this was definitely 2022. This got a reprint as well in there. 
Uh, definitely 2022. Yeah, it was definitely not 2021. That was a long time ago. Serenir. So this got a, uh, it's like a $7 secret. So I think this card got better for maybe they limited one of them or maybe it was the bandless speculation that it was going, going up a little bit because it might be a new replacement or something. I don't know. I, you guys know I'm not playing right now. I haven't even been playing Master Duel, much less uh, regular TCG. So I've been slacking a little bit. We have Yoshiro of the Aqua again. The Maiden of the Aqua retrain, which is for some reason in here. Cucumber, we have Tilting. Cashier Ogre, a Drew Swarm. That's a great card. That's one of the best cards of the Mega Tens in Secret. So even the Super, I expect it's still probably going to be a dollar. We'll see. But you know, maybe because everybody wants the Secret, it's not. We'll have to see what it falls out at. But it ends up being one, two, three, four. We have Origin, Original Bamboo Sword, not Origin. Salmon, Spiritualist, Preparations, Goaty, Venus Slip, and Full Bloom and Blackwing Chinook the Snow Blast. We're not gonna open the whole case today, by the way, so, you know, that would be a long video because blisters take a pretty long time to open because you gotta open the blister and then the pack, so it's like two or three times as long as opening a regular pack. Uh, so we're not gonna open the whole case, but we are gonna open probably like 25, 30 packs over a booster box, see what we can get. Maybe we can pull something crazy. I'm still doing three from the back. I'm just used to doing three, okay? I still think this is an incredible set, just in general. It's just a really nice set to when you can have value cards at every level, besides common, but at this point, it's really hard to have a common view or something, but you know, when it goes super ultra and secret and starlight, there's all good cards in all four of those rarities. That's just a good way to have value in the set. So I think Konami should take note and potentially try and do that more in the future. Maybe they could even like intentionally put cards they know are good at super rare. And the thing that that does is first of all, it makes the supers have some value. Second of all, it means when they do like the, the reprints, the reprint, as you see in the tens, the bestial stuff goes, you know, the super rares can go get upgraded and be like some of the best cards in the set. So. That's always a plus, you know? And then, and those aren't even like Druid Swarm again. This, we're actually getting really lucky with these supers. And these aren't even like generic cards and they're still doing well in the tins. Cause like, you have to be a pretty generic card to go like really expensive. You have to be like Pot of Prosperity or something. Cause you know, the Mega Tins are a very cheap product. It's easy to pull everything most of the time because you know, there's only like, you know, there's no high rarity or anything. They do short print stuff sometimes, but pretty easy to pull everything. It's a cheap product overall. Like usually it's like a hundred and like 80 bucks to buy a case versus like a case of, you know, regular, regular stuff is 600, 700 bucks, stuff like that. Just easier to obtain and it floods the market because it's usually such a good reprint, you know, overall set. So people are all buying it. So holding value there is pretty tough. So that, you know, coming out from a super and then going to a secret and actually holding value is pretty amazing. Uh, and we'll see if how well they do it because you know they just came out but i just think that having a lot of value over the different rarities like a nice spread you don't want you know all the value to be in secrets or all the value value to be in ultras because then you're only looking for the ultras so when you open a booster box you're going to get you know two ultras or two secrets four ultras and then a bunch of supers however many extra like you'll either get 18 or 17 depending on if you get like a starlight so if your only you know hits are out of the ultra spot you basically have four chances of hits but if you have hits in ultra secret and you have chances at the supers, you have a potential chance at a hit in every single pack. It doesn't go away like once you've pulled the four ultras or the two secrets, you know, you could pull something everywhere. So it's a really like, it just makes opening more fun. It makes, there there's a better spread. There's a me too, that's not a good card. Uh, not a good ultra and even the starlight's like 50 bucks, but it just makes it better for everybody. I think a lot of people, I've noticed like on my, my video that, you know, has all the views now from people, me just talking about the problem with Yu-Gi-Oh! Surprisingly like crazy amount of views, but uh, there's a lot of comments when you do have, you know, when it gets to that many people, there's going to be some comments. And just a lot of people just don't understand that Yu-Gi-Oh! is an economy that we have to consider. So I know that if you're a buyer and all you do is play, you don't care about like any uh, anybody else. You know, you don't care about the stores. You don't care about the, you know, the sellers. You don't care about Konami. You don't care about any of that. You just care about getting cheap cards. But you should care about it because if you don't care about the Kana or the Konami, if you don't care about the economy, the, eco the economy, the economy, that's an interesting thing. If you don't care about the economy of the cards, you know, eventually it's gonna crash and burn because unfortunately everything does revolve around if people are making money on it because that's just how it works. Konami's not making money doing Yu-Gi-Oh! They're not gonna do Yu-Gi-Oh! If stores aren't making money selling Yu-Gi-Oh! They're not gonna do Yu-Gi-Oh! Maybe players is the one thing. Players, they don't have to make money, but here's the thing about players. They need money to actually buy the cards, you know? So it kind of comes around, you know? So it, it, whether it's you're making money off cards or you're making money somewhere else, you know, off your job or whatever, and then you're buying the cards, there has to be some money flowing out to like buy the cards. There's just a 
there's just a lot going on and I don't think people realize that when they're buying cards and they don't really care but it is something spellbound secret rare very nice it's something that we really should care about and not that we want it to be expensive it's just that we want the value for our money to be good now I don't know how I got off on this tangent but basically oh yeah because Darkwing Blast is such a good product you want to spend your 65 bucks or 70 because if the box is so good it's worth 80 and when you open it up you get like a lot of value out of it then it's not as big of a deal to pay 80 but if people want you to pay 80 for something that stinks, obviously that is not fun. So, and obviously it doesn't make any sense because why would you do it? Because it's not worth it. But if you open something up and you're getting like super awesome rarities, you're getting uh, good cards in every rarity slot, your potential to pull like a, you know, a great card is much, much higher than every other set. You're getting playable cards everywhere. Everything you open up, it's just so much more worth it. The experience is worth it. The cards you get are worth it. It's just a better thing for everybody. Cashier Unicorn, there we go. Very nice card. Used to be 20 bucks, and now we can pop it up and just see how much we lost right here. So enough of that, uh, enough of that sidetrack uh, thing, but you guys can uh, let me know in the comments what you think about that. It is, it is something that I think about all the time. There is a side of Yu-Gi-Oh that some people just don't really realize that, you know, there is some importance to the cards maintaining value. And if we keep releasing these stinky sets, and uh, the reason I keep bringing it up is because this set is so good. Like Darkwing Blast was amazing. And I hope we can have more Darkwing Blasts. Like there's no reason we can't have a couple Darkwing Blasts a year, you know, great sets that are really awesome. We want more than a couple, honestly. We, we wanna have four of them, four great sets a year. That would be really nice. And then the reprints, you know? We don't need so many reprints, I think. I feel like we're getting crazy. Like, Rarity Collection and Mega 10 and Battles of Legend. And I feel like, is there another one that I missed? I guess Maven's was last year, so I guess Rarity Collection took that spot. But three reprints, you know, might be a little bit too much. If there's four, then I missed one. But oh, OTS is all reprints too. The thing about these great sets is they hold up better if they don't have, like, everything reprinted, you know? So if this could, like, last a couple years, you know? But then I guess it'd be harder and harder to get the cards, you know? I don't know. Maybe if they just had a bigger print run of these. Who knows? Who knows? We'll figure it out one day. I don't know if we will, actually. Valence, those didn't get a reprint. <laughs> that was funny. Somebody's like, they didn't reprint the Valence cards. And I was like, I wonder why. This has been fun. It's been fun. I've just just been kind of chatting along. So hopefully you guys have enjoyed this. More, it was sort of a discussion video as we were doing the opening, which I don't know if you guys like that. If you guys like when I'm just rambling while opening some, some cards, it's kind of like, it, it reminds me of a, a TikTok thing. You know, you're watching a Subway Surfer while you're also listening to somebody talk. It's almost the same thing as this video. All right, it's our last pack here. I think we've opened like 30 packs or something. I didn't actually count them, but uh, we've gotten eight. I don't think once, if we only got one secret, it's kind of rough actually. We did pretty good other than that. Let's see. Will there be a Blackwing in here? Blackwing Starlight, who knows? Who knows? Let's see if we can do it. We have the Silent Wolf Kalupo. Great Noodle. Black Squ Shadow Squall, Celestial. Secret Arts, we have Decisive Battle, the Zongna, Nature Mole Cricket. Okay, we gotta open a couple more packs. We only got one secret. All right, I'm gonna add five packs to the mix. So give us five more chances at a secret here. Come on, Secret Rare. I think we got a Spellbound and that was it. Uh, let's get an Illubelion, that would be nice. How about we get a Fenrir as well? How about that? Or Blazing Cartesia, that's a good secret. Or a Starlight, obviously. Camellia, Great Noodle, Shadow Squall. Also, we'll probably be doing another search for the Blackwing Dragon very soon. Um, so if you want to see that, let me know in the comments that you are hyped about it. Let me know how important is it that we pull the Blackwing? Because I want to know. Do you guys care about pulling the Blackwing? Or is it like, whatever, I don't care about the Blackwing. Personally, I just feel like it's a, you know, it's a missed, a missed thing we did. We missed the Blackwing. It's unfinished business. That's what I'm searching for. Turbo Tainted. And, oh my gosh. <laughs> wow, and it's Super OC, another Mitsu. Honestly, we'll probably pull that as a Starlight again. I think that's what we pulled the first time. Did we ever pull another one? Oh, besides, yeah, the Simo moment, obviously. The Rukulos we did pull, that was sweet. Why did I Why did I have open packs of that? I can't remember, something about the live stream. I really can't remember. Kagero, Mold Cricket, we have Catalyzer. Kagero, we have uh, Power Load, okay, Dino Slayer. Two more packs, guys. It's been an interesting video. Definitely a little bit different than our normal. Haven't talked much about, I guess I, you know, actually I have been talking about the set the whole time, haven't I, basically? So maybe I have. Four from the back, maybe even more than usual. Who knows, Laughing Puffin, that got like a super, didn't it? Curse of Aramateer, not Aramaseer. We have Zonda, Tribrigade. Silver Sword Master. Oh, okay, last pack magic, here we go. We're just clearing out the bad ones for later, right? Final pack of Darkwing Blast. Hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. I can't speak. Hit that sub button. I'll say sub, that'll make it a little bit easier. And uh, if you do, you will have fun. There will be guaranteed fun on the channel. <laughs> Psychic Grover, by guarantee, I mean, I hope you have fun. Let's go, we have Turbo Tainted. Amazonist Pet Liger, last pack magic here. Can we do it? Starlight Rare, Blackwing Dragon. 
No, we can't. Shout out to Tomefo Show, Daxter, Tomato Juice, Puffins of Doom, Ernesto Deanna, America Doyster, Supreme Stage 21, CJ, and then a Tai Show, Ian Moosey Jr. Barding, Robert F., and Thomas McLean. Thank you guys for supporting the channel. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.